Uh-oh. Well, let's see. Move it over here. Or you can go that way. There we go. So we need to make you... A little closer. Okay. Here you get that look. Yeah. Smile. <laughs> You're looking at the thing. You can't look at the thing. Look at me. Yeah. Are you looking here? No, yeah. look here. That's where they look at your eyes. Let's see. There. Here's our here. Are you going to do it now? Yeah, whenever you're here. Oh, I think you're. Okay. Now. Let's start with a big smile first. Thing. <laughs> Dear, don't do that. Well, hello, folks. This is Ward from Cart Parts Rest. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, you've got a big golf cart, what to start with and what to finish with. We may get that far in this. If it's too long, we'll make two or three videos out of this. But we just want to help you know what you're doing from start to finish so that you'll be satisfied and you will learn how to repair golf carts and maybe others also. Okay, so the first thing you do is you uh, make sure your batteries are good. You make sure you've got water in them and that they're charged. That's that's basic. That's the bottom. Uh, if the batteries have water in them and if they're charged, oh, I don't want to do that. I'll do this. <laughs> and you have to start all over again. Yeah, I do. Uh, that's what I was saying. Oh no, he's got his glasses up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> We're starting all over again. Oh. No. Keep your eyes glued to the thing, don't like they like you have them closed or something. Keep them glued on the screen there. Yeah? Yes. No, you this don't is, see that. This is, I want the picture of seeing me smiling. That... You're you're fine when you're explaining things to you. Right. So here we go. I'm gonna do it again. So well, this is Ward Barch from CartPartsTheRest.com, and I'm here to help you with your golf cart that isn't running for some reason or another. We're going to figure it out, and we're going to help you to repair it and save $85 an hour versus sending it into a shop. So the first thing you do is you make sure your batteries are good. first thing you do is make sure uh, your batteries are full of water and that that they're charged up. You can see if it's, they're charged up and they have 36 or 48 volts across the bank. Uh, they won't charge. If your charger won't start for some reason, that's another thing to consider. If it won't start, um, you need to know that if you have a Lester, an older Lester charger, you have to have 70% uh, of the battery voltage in the batteries. Like if it's 48 volts, it's got to be around 36 volts in the batteries before the, the charger will start. If it's 24 volts, it's going to be 70% of that before it'll st start. The new the new lusters require only 12 volts, and the quick charge battery chargers require only 5 volts. So uh, you may if they don't charge, then you've got a problem with your charger, or the vol voltage is too low to start with. So you check your batteries, make sure there's water in, and then you, you, you uh, it's still not, that's not your problem. You need to make sure all your battery terminals are clean, and that you have good cables and good, clean, shiny connections. Many times the, uh, there's white corrosion under the, the clamps that go on the posts on the, uh, the batteries. If you've got posts versus terminals on the side. No matter what, you need to make sure they're all good, clean, and then you put some um, silicon grease on them, and then you're all set for a long time. Uh, so you make sure that's good. Once you've got your, your batteries good, and you've got your cable good, and it still doesn't run, then it's time to check for other things. Uh, first thing you need to do at this point, is you need to check your motor. Um, there's some electrical ways to do it, but the, really the best thing to do is 
if an older cart, being over 10, 10 years old, you should uh, you should uh, disconnect the battery cables from the motor after you label them and take a picture of how they're hooked up. And after that, you take disconnect the speed sensor on the back if it's got one, and and then you take out the four bolts, and you take the motor and put it on the floor or on your bench and get a block of wood and cap the coupling. If it's, if it's a AMD or NIDAC motor, you tap the coupling and separate it into two pieces. You tip it on the tail end and you lift off the, the case in the field and set it aside. And then now you're, you're able to look at the armature, the brushes and the brush holder. <clears throat> you're able to tell how dirty and filthy it is inside. So if you're in Louisiana, down south, <clears throat> many times it's just the, uh, the moisture causes the brushes to swell and lock the brushes in place and they won't come in as the, as the armature turns and wears on the brushes. So then that creates a gap and it starts arcing and burning and causing pits and grooves in your armature. And at that point, you need to rebuild it or replace it. And these days, there's good replacement motors at fair prices in the United States. So those are your options at this point. Um, you may have a bad controller also. If your motor is bad, it usually blows your controller. But the first thing you do is you check your motor and you make sure it's good. So, and then... Uh, if you don't know what to look for with the, with the armature, um, send me a text. The picture of your armature and your brushes, things like that. And then uh, I can look at it and tell you if it's good or bad, or if it's potentially good or bad. Or you could probably look at it yourself and just figure it out. But I have armature, I can get armatures, I can get brushes. I have brushes and I have brush holders here and bearings. So. Almost anything you need, we have. If the armature isn't grooved, uh, you're in pretty good shape. You can clean it up with emery cloth or something like that. If it's grooved, you may need to turn it. Have somebody turn it with a lathe, just true it up, and then clean up the, the slots between the segments. And uh, then you can. The other thing is, if you take it into a motor shop, the armature, and have it tested. They have a thing called a growler, and that'll tell you, tell them, tell you that it's shorter or not. It makes a certain noise. And put AC on it, it vibrates, and they can tell by the sound if it's shorter. Or not. So once you get your motor going, you know, once you know you have a good motor, motor is the foundation of your golf cart, really, and, and that's usually the cause of bad bad controllers. So once you have the motor good. It still doesn't roll, run, and then that's the time you want to consider rebuilding your controller or replacing it. And that's the time you uh, go on my website and look up your controller and and uh, or, but, and order it. You can order. You can pay for the rebuild there, and then I will call you up and get all your information and review all this stuff. To make sure. Um, that you've done everything you need to do and you've proved it. If you have a series motor, there's also your forward reverse switch. It's a big switch under the seat and it, that can also cause problems. And so can the, the solenoid. There's a solenoid, a big one. You, you, you shouldn't just swap and drop because you're just going to waste money. A lot of times you don't need to do that. I can tell you how to test it and make sure it works. Uh, so you have your solenoid, you have a forward reverse switch, you have your batteries. You have your motor, your cables, your controller. There's lots of things that can cause it not to run. So once you've checked all these things out and you're still not running, give me a call. I'll tell you what. I'll give you my... Uh, let's see. Just send me a message on my website. On the info, contact us. There's a place to send me an email message. And then I can... Uh, communicate with you at my convenience. So, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. I hope this has helped you. 
gives you a few things to check and to understand. So basically, I've talked about a, a series motor setup, the older style. The other style is not is a uh, shunt type motor and doesn't have a big switch under the seat. It has a toggle switch on the dash. And that's a completely different setup. So it's either the motor, the controller then, or the, uh, the one solenoid. Anyway, God bless you. Uh, hope this is helpful. May the Lord be with you. May he be your God and your Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Ray. Mm -hmm. Here, you shouldn't tell him to call you. I didn't. He I started to. You did first. I know. You did. I can you? cut that out. You can? If I have to. Oh, okay. I think okay. I can. Uh, and, and? Yeah.